yards Takes a lab king to raise the bar hey. Up from a Hendrix play guitar Right down to your phony ass a and hey. John Lennon dies, the world is stunned What if Mark Chapman didn't shoot that gun? Hey. The same one who sang give peace a chance Was the same one who died from violent hands So should we all take a silent stance Or celebrities targets for my rape fans? I know something smells like teen spirit I know something smells like teen spirit And if someone yells, can we hear it? Or we gotta be dead for you to listen to the lyrics? Uh. Sleepy trance, cause tonight even the dead will dance. They will love you when you're dead. It don't matter who you are, just as long as you can be a dead super super star. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to TKSRadio.net. We have Yas of Dead Celebrity Status on the line. What's up, bro? How's it going? It's going excellent. Good, sir. How are you today? Oh, dude, my day is going pretty good. It's nice weather out in Montana right now. Lots of mountain Montana scenery. Montana seems to always have nice weather. We, we just rolled through there while we were coming <laughs> off tour, and uh, it was one of our favorite places to actually drive through. So Nice. <laughs> So, yeah, let's kick this off. Uh, the whole concept behind the name Dead Celebrity Status and who came up with it, was it you or Bobby? Uh, pretty much it's a collaboration. Everything Bobby and I do, we kind of we laugh and joke about it a lot, but we kind of share the same brain. Um, it's kind of why we've had this partnership that's lasted us, you know, over 20 years. Over 20 years, Bobby and I have been making music together and you know, just conceptualizing together and just being, you know, family. Um, and you really can't do that if if you guys don't share the same, uh, you know, the same wavelength uh, constantly. And, and I'm blessed enough to have a partner such as him where, where we're able to do that. So the whole vision of this album is um, it, it has to do with how long we've been gone. You know, we, you know, when we talk blood music, 
Uh, you know, we were coming right off a of success of Project Wise, our other band, and, and it was just kind of like a tribute to music, to our fans, to letting them know that, you know, without music, there's no Gas and Bobby, there is no DCS. This is what we live for, this is what we breathe, and this is all we care about. Um, and then we went through a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of difficulties, turmoil, just a lot of things happened. Um, and what we ended up doing is spending seven years uh, literally in, in a living a living hell for the most part. Um, and when you have that time to reflect on what's going on, you start thinking about the things that are important to you. And you start wow. seeing how you start realizing where you belong in this so-called universe. Um, and you get to take a step back. And that's what we were able to do over seven years, take a step back and really understand the way things work, the way people interact with one another, and what we ultimately believe we are. And the throwaway kids, conceptually, is is anything that doesn't fit in to contemporary society, the contemporary rules, uh, is, is a throwaway kid. We, we are the ones that, that are against the game. We are the ones that are, that are breaking trends. We are the ones that, you know, refuse to conform. We're, we're not, you know, we, we, we're not... Not only are we not the sheep, but, but we're the ones, you know, executing the shepherd, right? We're, we're the throwaway kids. We're everything that is, that is what we dislike with, with society. And with the way we got this, it, it, it comes down to our fans, really. Now, we started looking at, you know, who cared about us and who we cared about. Um, and, you know, these are kids that have, have gone through tough times and hardships. We're, we're all a product of of the environment we're around and the society we're around and, and we're always told what to do, how to behave and how to act. And, and really what a throwaway kid is, is you know, it's, it's a giant middle finger to anyone who tells you how you're supposed to do things. Um, and ultimately in a nutshell, uh, it's, it's another dedication to, to all of our misfits, all of our fans, you know, whether, whether you listen to hip hop, or you listen to metal, or you listen to country, or you listen to indie rock, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, what's beautiful about music is that it brings people together. And I agree with that, hundred percent. You know, that's yeah. what it's about. We bring to it's we we don't have a genre. People ask us all the time, you know, what, what genre are you guys in? We we bend genres. That's what we tell them. We're we're genre benders. We we're not trying to be stuck um, making hip hop or or heavy alternative hip or whatever you want to call it. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, what we make is we make music for misfits. Um, and that's what a throwaway kid, you know, we're the night walkers, we're the, we're the soul searchers, we're the, you know, we have the bleeding hearts. We, we are everything that is against uh, contemporary rules. Um, and, and together, we're an army. Uh, you know, we, there's a lot of kids out there that we've come across that, only have the music, you know, they don't have a family, they don't have friends, they don't have, you know, a lot of good things happening for them, and what they do is they have solitude within their rooms in four walls, and they have music, and music is kind of the savior, and we're blessed and we're fortunate enough to be able to create some of this music to help people, so what we're saying to those kids, and what we're saying to those people, is that even though you feel like you're alone, you're not because you have us, we, you you have you have an army of misfits and throwaway kids that are all believing the same thing and feeling the same things and come together for the same reason, which is therapy through music, which is love through music, and and that that's what we're doing. That's what DCS is about. That is very deep, and I love that answer, man. I, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I rambled there for a <laughs> Nah, dude, it's, it's totally cool. I like I like how deep you went into that. It's very good. You know, to all the fans out there, Dead Celebrity Status is back, and they're not going to go away. So, no, that, and absolutely, you hit it. We're, we're, not, we're here to stay, and we're right in your face. We're not just, you know, you know, hanging in the background this time around. We're working in your face, and we're telling you we're here whether you like it or not. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about the track I debuted on the air called They Will Love You. Let's talk about the concept and what inspired the lyrics behind that track. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a play on, uh, uh first of all, thank you for, for playing. Uh, we've been getting a lot of love and a lot of support already, you know. Hey, you're welcome, radio. bro. You're welcome. You know, charge. And to have you support it and do your thing, that, that, that's nothing but misfit love here, so thank you, first of all. Uh, second of all, 
uh, the song, you know, it's it's kind of a play on our name, uh, loosely. You know, we are dead celebrity status. When you sit down and think of what that name really means, um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But it's the idea that you know we we immortalize things that not not that they're not real or genuine, but it's like we pay attention to things more so when they're gone. Um, and we've seen how many times have we seen you know a dead celebrity uh, just become reach its their highest peak of stardom or fame or or actually be recognized or noticed for their body of work once they're dead. It's become a very common bad um, in our society. Yeah, uh, it has. Love, you know, it has for sure. Yeah, right. And, and so they will love you. It's kind of plays on that. You know, it's it's about they will love you when you're dead. Um, it's about achieving that. It's not about achieving stardom, right? It's about achieving an appreciation from, from people. And a lot of the times, people won't even pay attention to you uh, unless you're a super, unless you're Lady Gaga, uh, which 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 is which is sad because she doesn't actually have anything to say in return, right? So she's got you know she's got all millions of people paying attention to her, and she's really giving them verbal vomit, right? It's it's it's, it's trash. Um, and I apologize to anyone that likes Lady Gaga, right? but <laughs> I'm attacking her personally. You know, I could name 99.9 percent of the artists that I live that are on the radio or that are you know so-called superstars. Um, they all do the same thing, right? It's a corporation. They're part of a corporate world, and they're about making money. They're not about making art. They disguise it that they're making art, but what they're doing is they're exploiting art. Now, there's a difference. There's a difference between creating and making art and exploiting it. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, they would love you when your dead is a boat, right? Yeah, and that track bumps hard. I love it. And, you know, any artist from, you know, you had Jim Morris, Kurt Cobain, any of those artists, you know, when they passed away, you know, like the record labels re-released albums and stuff, it's kind of a fucked up way they did things, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, I almost feel like, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying there's conspiracies or anything, but... I, you know, in my heart of hearts, I know that, you know, unfortunately, when, when one of these great artists die, it's almost, I know, to celebrate in a back room in some building because they realize the amount of money that they're now going to make without having to pay this person anymore. Oh, like um, and you just look at, you look at the legacy of Kurt Cobain, right? Yeah, of course he was superstar and, you know, they made millions of dollars, but when he died, the, the amount of money they were able to profit off of his body of work and everything, you know, just releasing and Tupac, like you, you see it constantly. Uh, someone is making millions of dollars off of somebody's hard earned art, uh, but they're dead now. They no longer are compensated, and someone's just, you know, constantly just cashing in. Yeah, like uh, Tina Turner, when she passed away, man, they were jacked up her prices on Amazon, dude. It was fucked up. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson, everything, right? It's, it's, as soon as someone dies, you know, I remember way back, I, I get back to you know, Roy Orbison, right? Uh, you know, Pretty Woman and all that stuff. Like, yeah, you know, he, he, was, he was a big name, but when he died... I believe he was the highest played song on the radio uh, in America for like months straight, like smash right? And it's because the dude died, dude. And it, unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. Yep, I, it's it's fucked up, but that's that's how they do things. So I got a couple fans wanted to ask, what happened between Bodog Records and the time between that and now? If you would like to answer that. Well, you know, yeah, a, a, a lot happened. Um, in a nutshell, you know, that was probably one of the more difficult times for both Bobby and myself. Um, the immediate ending of the whole Bodog situation. And literally, we hit rock bottom um, in every possible way, you know, uh, professionally, uh, creatively, financially, uh, name it. We just, we got put in a situation and, and backed up into a corner um, and, and had to deal with it. And we dealt with it the hard way. You know, there's a lot of stuff legally I'm not allowed to talk about even now. Um, but we went through some hardships and, and, and it's, you know, the token, uh, same old story of, you know, the bigger machine, um, taking advantage of bullying, right? Bullying, uh, the smaller artists, which is, you know, we're just the artists. We only have so much power. Um, and so, you know, we hit really tough times and, uh, we were dealing with some personal things. 
things. I was dealing with some health issues. And uh, again, right, just experiencing such a, uh, you know, such an, uh, an enormous change in our lives uh, is very difficult to deal. So when we talk about, you know, um, we understand what it's like to be alone. We understand what it's like to go through tough times and, 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 and everything. Bobby and I have lived it. You know, we write about this stuff because we think this is what people want to hear. We write about this stuff because uh, it's part of us, right? This is, this is reality. Um, in our reality, and uh, one of the things we, we need to do, and we encourage everybody, is, is you know, when they get you down, um, and, and you hit rock bottom, and you feel like you have no other options, the only thing you have to do is create new options for yourself, um, and, and, and you got to push forward, you know, and that's what we've tried to do, and we decided to go back to university. It wasn't enough for us to just sit around and, and, and let life drain us. We, we needed to find an escape, and that's what education became. It became a form of escapism for us and a new way of challenging ourselves. Um, and we both went back to university and got degrees, something I never thought we would ever end up doing. You know, we you know, were done with school a long time ago, and you know, we signed a major record deal with so you know. School was out of the books. It was never necessary. Um, and it's not that we needed school. Well, we kind of did. We needed something, right? We needed an escape. People find different ways to deal with, you know, their hardships and their pressures. We were fortunate enough to be able to use it in a way um, that would benefit us down the road, right? Channel it. That's what we did. We, we channeled all of our all of our emotion and our turmoil and, our, and things that were happening to us through school. We went to university, and, and what that actually did is it, it opened our minds um, in a different way and it made us look at things in a, in a way we hadn't done in a really long time. Um, because what happens when you're in this industry, you become somewhat stagnant because you're always in a routine, right? You're going to the studio, you're making an album, you're out on the road, like it's, it's a constant. You don't, you know, creatively you challenge yourself, but just everyday living is literally the same thing for years after years. Um, school gave us some discipline in the sense that you had deadlines to make that were much different than the music industry. So there were things we needed to do. Um, and what it did is it perked us up. It, it got us awake and it got us alive and, and we walked away from music because we had no other choice. We were legally binded to a real um, hell-bent situation. And uh, eventually, through school and whatnot, we started writing music again. And it brought us, it brought us closer and it gave us the perspective to look at the way they were happening and realize how we'd been bullied, how we'd been bullied, you know, by so many. Um, and that's what we're against. We're against the bully, right? That's what a throwaway kid, a kid is, is one who, who fights in the face of, 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 of the adversary, you know, the, the illegal oppressor. And, uh, <clears throat> and that's kind of what happened. We ended up uh, uh, working on the music. And once the buzz got out that we were out and we were coming back after so many years, we had a lot of interest, a lot of people, and, and it became the same old story again. It was like, oh, man, like these are some good opportunities, but what's going to happen in three, four years? We may end up exactly where we've ended up after Sony, after Warner and Bodog, right? It's the same old story, and, and we were fortunate enough to meet, uh, be introduced to, a, to an indie label um, by the name of 682 Records, which is currently our home. Hey, they're legit. And, uh, they're very legit. I uh, had a conversation with them not too long ago, and they're pretty professional. I'm glad you guys linked up a deal with them. Yeah, well, obviously they're professional, but, but more than the professional side of it is is they understood our vision. Um, they understood our art, and they still do. And it's never been a situation where it's been okay, you guys have to do this, we need you to do this, it's, it's, and we need to have it done. It's been like, they understand the vision as a whole and where we need to go, and they understand we're all on the same team. For the first time, it's not like we're fighting two different teams. Um, we're, we're, we're all part of the same family, the same gang, working towards one goal, which is which is a blessing, and which is what Bobby and I really needed uh, this time around. So uh, we ended up inking a deal with, with 682 Records, and uh, and and from there we, we we sit here on the telephone with the release of of this album, The Throwaway Kids, um, which is you know just got released last Tuesday and it's already you know making huge noise 
on the charts and, and everywhere. And, and it's a blessing because we've been gone for so long. And we don't have the big machine behind us, right? This isn't a major label uh, product. This is, you know, we're doing this indie. Uh, and to be able to do it indie and still be in the same charts as guys like, you know, Kanye and, and Jay-Z and Macklemore, um, it's a testament to our misfits, right? It, it shows that people care. And there's a reason why Bobby and I can't disappear for another seven years. There's people who need us, and in return, we need them, right? That's what a family does. It takes care of one another. And uh, I'm blessed. We are blessed to have all of our misfits still fighting for us. And we're going to continue to fight for them. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like that. Hell yeah. (laughs) So what's the most personal track on the album to you that you wrote? (sighs) Wow. See, personal... uh... You know, there's a couple. It's hard to <laughs> They're all personal, right? When you listen to every song, um, we write from our heart. You know, we don't really... We write from our heart, and, and we also like to tell stories. We like to pictures. We often say, you know, we make movies for the blind because you just close your eyes and you listen to our songs and their stories, right? Like some of the great writers uh, throughout history have been able to do that in the... You know, a song like uh, Hurts Like um, is very personal to both of us. Um, you know, we've, we've both dealt with, we've been surrounded by family and friends who have dealt with these sorts of issues, um, whether it be, you know, the, 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 the superficial um, exploitation that corporations throw upon us on magazines and say this is what beautiful is this is what perfect is it, that's all fake it, it, it's not it's not a proper reality and to, to see the hardships that women go through every day to see how they you know they, women have it tough they have it really tough you know there's a there is a uh, what's the word i'm looking for there's there's almost kind of a uh uh Oh, man, I'm short of words right now. I do apologize. But okay. there's, there's an expectation. Women, have, every day they wake up, there is an expectation. And it's forced upon them through the media. It's forced upon them on television and magazines. Oh, uh, yeah, all that, stars. all that weight loss stuff and all that bullshit. And yeah. the weight loss, it, it, the idea of beauty, right? It, who's beauty? Who's, whose concept of beauty is that? It, it's, it's people trying to make money off of beauty, right? It's, it's, it's not legitimate. And it's... And so things like that, um, you know, are very personal, as well as even on that song, you know, things like dealing with cancer and whatnot, you know, uh, you know, Bobby, you know, his mom, not the person, but, you know, she was diagnosed and she's a fighter and, and a survivor. And, you know, Lynn from our record label is a fighter and a survivor. And, you know, my cousin and my uncle right now are both fighters and survivors. So those are all very personal subjects that, you know, are, are important on that song. There's another song, um, Dancing on the Sun, uh, which is a very political song. Um, and it's important because, you know, we're talking about things that are happening in, in, in our world, which aren't right. A lot, a lot of the times, what's worse than the evil that happens in this world, the people who don't speak up against the evil, um, you know, it's, 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 it's the, the people who would, it's the silent majority. They are the enemy. It, you know, bad people are bad people and bad people will do bad things. But it's those, it's that silent majority that would rather stay in their house, you know, watching their 60 inch plasma TVs and only be concerned about themselves while atrocities are happening around them. You know, to me, that's the true evil because they know better, but they're just scared to say anything. Yeah, they just um, look the other home. way. They'd rather look the other way, right? Like the Boondock Saints, if you've ever seen that movie, you know, that's what that was all about. It was about two dudes who weren't just tired of bad guys, uh, and this is a film, but still, the message is important. It's not just guys that, that, that wanted to clean up the streets. It was guys that were sick of, of the silent majority, people who stood around and did nothing. Um, uh, Lupe Fiasco has a line uh, from, from, you know, his last album or album before that where he said, uh, you know, uh, I think all the silence is worse than all the violence. And that's the truth. It, it's those, you know, it's people who are afraid. It's, it's when someone comes knocking on your door because someone is chasing them down and you just shut the curtains. Right, you're worse than the person doing the chasing or doing the hurting because you have the opportunity to stand up for somebody, to protect somebody, to help somebody, and you should not because you're selfish, right? And you're thinking about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
So, you know, that song, Dancing in the Sun, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, my personal, you know, uh, Islamic heritage and being a Muslim post 9-11. On the Blood Music album, you know, we touched on it, we talked about it. And it was very, uh, you know, at that time, it was it wasn't apologetic, but it was also very appeasing to uh, to what was happening in the environment. Um, but to see the amount of racism and prejudice that has just really uh, taken itself to a new level in 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 North America, in America, around the world, is you know we're, we're treated like animals. You know, the Muslim population is is now you know the new the new. You know, we, we are the new racist uh, 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 target, but it's not even considered racist. Like, you can make fun of towel heads and, and, and camel jockeys and, and a bunch of, you know, all these things, and you're not even, con- these aren't considered racist terms anymore. These aren't considered what you're doing as, 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 a, as a disservice to humanity. Um, so on this, it, it's more of a, you know, again, it's more of a, it's, it's a misfit F you to, to, to say, I'm not gonna. St- we're not gonna stand by it anymore. You know, you, you slap me once, it's shame on me. Next time you try to slap me, guarantee you, I'm gonna put you in a chokehold and make you tap out. And and that's what this is about. It's about uh, we we will no longer be pushed. Uh, the whole album itself is is one big. It's a mission statement. Throwaway kids, misfits. We we will no longer be pushed because um, we we've had enough. And, and unless we do something, uh, and we gotta do it together, you know, fight the fight. Um, fight against oppression, you know, there's going to be more kids than being alone, uh, hurting themselves, not getting the help they need or the support. And that's what we need to do. We need to support each other and, and be there for one another. Exactly. Uh, that's the most true words I've heard on the air. And seriously, wow. <laughs> wow. And it's cool. true, though, because... Uh, you know, the whole guilty by association thing, just because one person does something doesn't mean the other person is going to, you know, it's bullshit. And Yeah, that, that's the, you know, that's the sheep mentality, right? That's follow the herd. Um, and, and I find that, you know, yeah, I find it terrible. I also find it to be normal. And normal is, to me, is, is it's, it's boring. And being boring is, is, is there's, you're not bringing anything to the table uh, to the race of humanity, right? It's you follow the herd. You just want to be like everybody else. Everyone wants to act like everybody else. No, see, and that's why I kind of, and and that's why I love juggalos. Uh, you know, I know not everybody is is the biggest fan of, of of what a juggalo is and what a juggalo represents. But uh, we had the opportunity to get on the road with Tech Nine, and that was really one of our uh, our, our introduction to the juggalo community. And uh, and we we learned from that is that you know these are. We felt safe with them, right? At first, it was like, oh, man, there's a bunch of kids with face paint. They're juggalos. They like ICP. These, these dudes are going to hate us. Uh, and, and when we got out there, the people we ended up getting the most love, we were on the Ever Ready Tour, um, the people we got the most love for was for juggalos, right? And, and yeah. juggalos started chanting, right? We started playing shows, and, and they would hear our name, and they would just start chanting, family. And it was like... It's like wow, and that's what it, that's what it feels like to be accepted, right? And, and 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 to to know that you're doing something right and touching people's hearts, and and we try to do it musically, and in return, these juggalos, you know, gave it back to us, and and we got off that tour. All of a sudden, Bobby and I, what we were doing, we'd be backstage before before a show, and and Bobby would be like, okay, do the count, do the count. How many juggalos are there today? And I'd look out into the crowd, and be like, oh, dude, the whole front is all juggalos. And that was like, we get, we give each other like high fives and stuff. Cause like, all right, <laughs> we're gonna, this is going to be amazing because we felt safe. You know, who says that? Who says that they feel safe with the juggalos around? We say it because, because it's the, it's the truth. We, we felt very safe. And, uh, and to, and to see, you know, that movement, uh, and those kids, is what matters to them is it's two things. What matters to a juggalo, and it's very similar to a lot of other underground movements like Tech Nine has, right? And like, you know, the Fountain Mouth King. And, 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 and dead celebrity status with our misfits is, is we care about music. Obviously, we've already talked about mm-hmm. that, how music can, can change the world and, and, and help each other. And two, it goes beyond that. It goes to we become a family and we care about each other. So it doesn't matter if you're in Montana and I'm in Toronto and there's another dude in, you know, Berlin. Uh, at the end of the day, we are all one family, right? We, we all care about the same thing, which is each other and it's music. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to build. So being normal, you know, to me, that's, that, that, it's sad. 
really, I, I pity those people, right? Uh, I find it very sad. And, and to follow the herd, to be just another sheep out in the field, um, you know, it, it's pathetic. And, and, and we are not them. We don't ever want to be them. We want to be us. We want to be misfits. One of my favorite quotes is actually, nothing good comes from normal people. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, we, you can't tell me, you know, Einstein was normal, you know, exactly. you can't tell me, you know, you can't tell me that Sugar Man was normal, you know, this, this is a dude who used to perform, you know, in a, in a club with his back to the wall while a smoke machine covered his silhouette, like, these aren't, these aren't, no, they, but they, they're not normal in the contemporary definition of what society thinks that word means, right, well, what we think normal is, is, you know, Cookie cutter personalities, uh, working cookie cutter nine to five jobs, uh, you know, with two cars in their garage and, you know, going on a trip to Disneyland. Like, that's normal. That, that's what normal is supposed to be. What, what, we're, what we're forced to believe is normal. Um, what, what, what we do, and as you said, what, what we see in art, you know, we do something special. Right, mm-hmm. um, it's play was special. You know, Malcolm X was special. Uh, Tech Nine is special. These are special people doing special things. Um, so yeah, we, we we never want to fit in with them. We never want to be like them. That is deep, and uh, the the answer you're giving me are phenomenal, bro. I don't, I'm like kind of <laughs> I'm just kind of speechless. I, I like this. It's very deep and. Uh, I like it. I, I need to, you, you're good for the ego. I need to just chat with you and just ramble, and then you just make me feel good about myself. <laughs> well, it's, it's the truth, though, man. So, yeah. So let's, let's talk about the album artwork, okay? You have the uh, the gas mask and do holding the spite back. Is that that's like a post-apocalyptic theme? I'm I'm guessing for that. Absolutely. Yeah, and who? Yeah, so who came up with that? Oh. Uh, the artist himself, uh, conceptually, it was created by Bobby, myself, and our artist. Our artist is, is this incredible, uh, phenomenal artist named Ben Spangler out of Minnesota. So, like, we weren't even, you know, we, and that's, that's the other beautiful thing with music is you don't, are, are not being cookie cutter, uh, is we don't need to follow the proper rules. Uh, we can work with whoever we want, wherever we want, whenever we want. And uh, we've been a big fan of this artist, Ben, um, over over in Minnesota for a long time. He had a sick uh, clothing company. And so we just started brainstorming together and coming up with this concept that fit the whole throwaway kids attitude. Um, and when you get the album, I know a lot of people buy off of iTunes and stuff, but I really encourage people to uh, go to the 682 website, go to the Dead Celebrity Status website and order your hard copy. Um, what we try to do is uh, not just, we just don't want to make music, right? We, to us, this whole project is, is a creative um, a creative masterpiece uh, because it's more than just music. It's the visuals. It's the artwork. It's the photography. It's the, the message that's in the liner notes. And, uh, you know, I remember the, when I was a kid growing up, you know, and getting a new, you know, Iron Maiden album or, you know, the new, the new Public Enemy album. And the first thing you would do, even before you listen to the music, you, you'd open up that CD, uh, that cassette or that piece of vinyl, and you looked at the artwork, right? You looked at the, the thing, I'm, uh, you read the liner notes. I'm grinning right now because that's exactly what I still do, man. I got this- because I got walls and walls of CDs all over. I, mean, I still track down vinyls too, man. I'm all about hard copies, so I, I feel you 100%. Like, as I said, great big grin on my face when you decided to say all that, because I do the same thing. <laughs> and, and, and there, there's a culture, there's a people, there's a, there's a group of us who really appreciate that. And so those who appreciate it, we wanted to not just give them, you know, a CD with an insert and a picture of Bobby and myself. We wanted to give them something more, something they can appreciate. Like I appreciated growing up, this whole new lifestyle that we live where everything is instantaneous, right? Everything we want is now. We must have it now. We tweet now. We post all the statuses now. We want replies now. We, we download our music now. We download our movies. Everything is now. There's no more the ritual of, of waiting for things to, to develop and, and, and come out has been lost. And we really wanted to do that with the Throwaway Kids album. And so the artwork, you know, you have to get it. You just got to get the album. Ben, you know, did an amazing job. It's set kind of in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, and, and, you know, you, there's an image of this girl, uh, Lala, uh, who's in it, who's, who's a central character 
to the whole concept of this album and the videos. We just put out a new video uh, for the Throw Up Kids, the self-titled track. Um, and what we're actually doing is is to add to the to the whole masterpiece is we're releasing a video for every song on this album. Um, and oh if you hell yeah! First video. Yeah, like we're not we're not playing. You know, we've been gone for seven years, and we need to give something back to our misfits. So every song is gonna have a video, but not a typical video. It's not like a performance based video that that you're used to. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating little mini indie films, little little movies. Um, and if you've seen the first one, it, basically the central character is, 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 is the star Lala, who's just an incredible, beautiful uh, artist, actress, model, um, and a visionary in her own right. And this director we have, uh, Chris Fisher out of Vancouver, who's just a brilliant visionary and a master, a master behind the camera. And we're coming out with these really cool art house films, and they're all going to connect. So at the end of this... Uh, you're going to have 12 of these little mini movies, which are going to make up one big musical. So when you piece it all together, you can watch it. And, and it's this journey. It's this journey of this girl uh, who you see in this first episode um, and where she ends up uh, and the characters she meets and, and what it all means. Uh, hopefully it will be revealed as chapters continue on. Uh, so I look forward to everybody, you know, you know, watching these things and sharing these things and, and really getting people excited about our own little three letter opera. Um, you got me excited. Is, is, is represented as well and, and everything in that nature. You got me very excited. And, and wow. <laughs> and, uh, a fan want to know since, since you're working on all the, the whole music video concept, are you playing a headlining tour soon? Yeah, absolutely. That that you know, we're gonna be on the road a lot. I know a lot of people have been asking. We you know, first thing we did even before we released the album, we, we went down there, we were down in the States and uh we were on tour with the Cottonmouth Kings and uh Brother Jay and X Clan, um and Imperial Sound Clash and, and it was part of the Free the Kings tour. Uh so you know, that was a great opportunity for us to, to, to kick start it and that's exactly what we've done. We've kick started it. Uh the album dropped literally on Tuesday. Um, the video dropped one week before that, and we've created all these projects. Now we've created the music, the art, the videos. We've done all. We've done all the, the hard work. Now it's time to get real serious and just get on the road. Um, and I promise you guys, I promise all my misfits, uh, we will be everywhere. Whether you're in America, Europe, Canada, uh, we are coming. Uh, I don't know about Asia. If so someone out there listening in Asia wants us there please we'd love to come we'd love to be big in japan um i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure you have some loyal fans out there i'm sure japan's we're dying, a- we're dying to get out to asia so but no for real uh there are we're in talks right now there's a couple of uh tours bubbling um a couple of headlining tours as well as a couple of just big tours that we will be part of which is what we like we like to be part of you know those those be part of a a, a select group of put on good shows, you know, the Tech Nines of the world, you know, the Swollen Members and, you know, the Twisteds and, and everything uh, of that nature. So uh, just stay tuned. Things are in progress, and, and we plan on not coming off the road. Bobby and I are road warriors, um, and we've always said that, and if you looked at our track history, when we get on the road, we stay on the road. We, we don't like being at home. You know, at home, we're stagnant, and, and, and we really love being on stage, and more importantly, off stage, hanging out with, with the fans and meeting people. And, and if you come to a Dead Celeb show, throw this out, you know, call my bluff. Ask anybody who's been to a Dead Celeb show if if we hang out, because we do. We don't hide backstage. We, we're there. We're at the merch table. We're, we shake hands and a hug and chat and, and do all that for as long as we can. And uh, and that's, that's what we're most excited about is getting back on the road. And that is the truth, because I talked to the man himself at the billing show and actually uh, i handed him a cd so he does talk talks he talked to me for a good half hour or so so it's pretty cool yeah it's hella cool <laughs> that's hella cool yeah and uh, another fan wanted to ask uh you mentioned swallow members and they want to know what you thought of mad child starting up battle axe battle axe records again uh, i think it was necessary for him right it's it's that's something that, you know, he started way back, you know, when Balance had come out, um, and they were just putting out balls and shit. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you end up getting caught in that system, which is what they ended up getting. You know, this is once you, 
reach a certain peak of, of popularity, um, like it or not, you end up having a lot of people around you, a lot of people that want to take control of, of your career and add their two cents and, and direct you this way and that way. And, and a lot of, we all, I don't need to talk about Matt Chow. Know, a lot of people know about his story and his trials and tribulations uh, financially and drug wise and everything else and and it's uh it's 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 nice to see uh him bounce back up on his feet you know he disappeared for a long time and, and went through some hardships and and he's i've been watching him you know he's a good friend of ours and we've been watching match out for the for the last two years really crank things up and get back and focused and, and do the whole battle axe warrior movement thing um and that's very exciting, you know, he's, he's, as I said, you know, he's someone we, we respect, and, and he's family, you know, we've, we've done tracks with Swollen Members back then, and, and, and it's, honestly, Matt Chell was supposed to be on this album, The Throwaway Kids, uh, on a track with Decisive and, and Meg T, and unfortunately, just due to timing uh, issues, uh, we had to hand it in before he was able to lay down his verse, um, it was a very unfortunate situation, but uh, we will, you know, end up doing something with Matt again, and uh, I'm really happy with the success he's getting again because he deserves it because, you know, he's talented and he works hard, right? He, and uh, anybody out there, you know, watching should should use that as a, as a reason to never give up, right? No matter what you get thrown at you, you've got to find a way to pick yourself up. And what Bobby and I have been able to do, and, and, and we're back. You know, it's been seven years, and we're back, and, and we're built. You know, one spit at a time. So, um, yeah, so uh, to answer, uh, that was a long answer. But, yes, I think what he's doing is great, and it's good to see. Hell, yeah. And uh, some some little bit of history. You guys are on the State of the Union track, uh, the soundtrack with the, the movie with the Ice Cube on in it. And how did you guys end up on the soundtrack? I mean, you guys fans of the original film with Vin Diesel? Yeah, you know, yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not a big, like, big Hollywood action movie fan myself. I like, I like, you know, I like a lot of Asian and Hong Kong type action films, but I'm more into more, you know, more, more indie type stuff. I'm not a really crazy about big blockbusters, but I saw the first Triple X and it was fun. And I think Vin Diesel does a good job in, in, in that. And actually, when Project Wise, uh, some history is, is they actually really wanted us on that first soundtrack, uh, the first one that had come out. And uh, it ended up falling through the cracks. Um, again, business is business, and I can't even get into, you know, all those little things. But uh, when the second film came out and they had Ice Cube in it, so Triple X 2, uh, the music supervisor who was interested in us in the first one uh, was still interested in us. And at that point, we were dead celebrity status, and he was like, you know, we'd love to get you guys to do a song and, you know, do, like, the theme song and, and all these other things. And so, uh, yeah, so we ended up, you know, providing um, Saya for that album and, and for that movie. So, you know, there's a big chunk of that movie where, where you listen to uh, to some celeb Messiah, and, you know, that was an honor because we got to go to the movies, you know, on the big screen and actually hear us. Um which is very cool, you know. That is cool dope. That's so do. dope, man. I can't even, like, that'd be just sitting there in a theater full of people and your music just playing through while Ice Cube is going around killing shit. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Actually, it almost made me throw up. I don't know, whenever something really cool or exciting happens, I, I feel like vomiting. Um, and it's one of those things that actually made me sick to my stomach, but in a good way, right? You're just looking at this big screen and you're hearing your art uh, being used and, and, you, and you're looking at people in the movie theater and they don't even know, but they're bobbing their heads, right? Because that's what music does. Music and they don't even know you're just... In a form they don't even know that you're just sitting there chilling with them. <laughs> no, they don't know. And, and, and there's an emotion, right? Music creates emotion. And to, to be able to look around and, and see people's heads uh, have an emotion attachment to what's being played, it's a... Uh, a humbling and incredible feeling. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Hell yeah, to that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're hoping, we're, hope, we're hoping on this album. We're hoping you know some of these songs you know film into television, um, and and hopefully we're able to to see these things you know on a big screen again because it, it'll be re it'll be really cool. Oh man, I will like try to help as much promo as I can, man. Like, I will send something to somebody to put in the movie. I don't know, man. I'll figure out a way. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So what advice would you give to up-and-coming artists starting out in the music industry? Um, to be honest, it's, it's the same... 
the same advice I've always been giving is 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 one is you got to make music you got to make art and whether it's music or film or or, or artistically designing whatever it is you have to do it for you because if you do it for you you're going to create what your heart wants right once you start thinking about the masses and other people you know that's when you become part of this whole corporate you know fake uh, I, ideology. Uh, you make music from your heart, right? You make it make it special. That's the first thing I tell anybody, because then it's it's we actually get to identify with what you want to create, what you want to present, and if people like it, they're gonna like what you do, and then you can you know uh, take it from there and build upon it. But you know, really hone your craft, whatever it is you do um, that you've now created that is you. Uh, make, you got to be the best at it, you know, and I don't mean like in a battle, like you got to be the number one, you just got to be as good as you can get, and in all honesty, you're never as good as you can ever be, you know, Bobby and, and, and myself constantly challenge ourselves uh, to, to just be better, you know, Bobby comes up with lines, and I'm not joking, he comes up with lines that just literally give me goosebumps, he, he says things, but you know, the, the hairs of the back of my neck stand up, um, it, and it constantly happens, and it just gets better and better and better, and, and, and that's what being a real artist is about. It's about pushing yourself, right? Uh, if, you, if you just become stagnant, um, you know, you plateau, and, and you never really do anything great. Uh, so first, make music from your heart, that, that make music that's you, then really craft it. I'm so sick. Again, we live in this, 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 this world, this, this new world of, of instant, instant gratification. We want everything now. Um, and people don't understand that you don't just buy a computer, get some band camp uh, website and some software and put out an album because you just started rapping months ago uh, or something because you watched American Idol. These are, this is a talent, right? LeBron James didn't just say, I'm going to play basketball and, 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 and get drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? He, he worked. you got to work. You know, anybody great at what they do, you have to put in your time. And, and just because you rap or you make music, it doesn't make you a rapper and it doesn't make you an artist, right? It just makes you somebody that's doing something that you enjoy. If you really want to be real, uh, you know, you want to be, you know, Randy Rhodes on a guitar, you better be able to play like Randy Rhodes because Randy Rhodes just didn't buy, you know, a brand new uh, guitar and say, I'm going to be a sick guitar player because I have a guitar. Yeah, no, Randy exactly. Rhodes to go to classical music classes while he was on tour with Ozzy Osbourne because he can always be better. That's what real talent is. And I'm so sick of all these, every, everyone with a MySpace page back in the day and everyone with a Facebook now and everyone with a Twitter uh, uh, is a model, they're an actor, they're, they're, they're a great rapper, they're all these things. And it's like, no, you got, you got, you got to really hone your craft. you got to be good at it. And that's why we're so over swamped with just so much garbage out there. Uh, you oh, know, dude, so like much garbage. Actor. There's so much garbage, man. Just on YouTube, everybody's just spamming people like, check my link, check my link, check my link, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I don't spam people. You know, I make music and I put it out there and I don't go and tell people, hey, check my stuff out. Yet I get a thousand people every day saying, hey, check me. Why? Why should I check you out? You haven't done anything for me to warrant that. Uh, go out there and create something, right? Go out there and play shows, you know, build movement. That's what we did. We built a movement. We did it the old school way. Um, and, and that's the way things need to be done. So my message to this generation, if you're stuck now, generation, get out of it. Look at what the greats have done. Look at what people who matter, people who have longevity. Um, there's a reason why people like, like um, you know, BC Boys, you know, and God rest his soul, MCA, rest in peace. But there's people like, the reason why BC Boys have, will never be forgotten, you know, right? They're here for a lifetime, an eternity, because they, they did things the right way. They created a movement. They created a project. They created uh, a, an art. Um, you know, and, and, you know, Metallica. Metallica will always be here. Metallica ain't going anywhere. Why? Because they've worked at what they've done. Uh, they're not just an overnight sensation. People think if you get a million views on YouTube, uh, you've, you've done it. No, all you did is get a million people to watch you and probably laugh at you and, and make fun of you and, and say, oh, that was interesting. Um, but that's not art. Uh, so, uh, you know, I encourage people to do things the proper way. Get out there and tour. Get out there, create a movement. Create proper material and, and be as good as you can get. And, and then the last thing, and most importantly, is, is don't listen to them. <clears throat> you know, and who is them? That's whoever tells you to do things their way. I'm 
not telling you to do things like dead celebrity status. I want you to do it your way. But do it your way and don't listen to anyone else. So if someone says, well, you need a pop it. You need, you need a hook. You need to have only 16 bars in your verse. Do what you want to do and do it right and make it great. And if you don't listen to them, what you end up creating is, 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 is art. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Art. That is very, very true. And one of my favorite quotes is one from one of my art, favorite artists. He goes by Crossworm, C-R-O-S-S-W-R-M. Um, it goes by Johnny Anger, and he's part of a group called Sun, Sky, and Surface. But to get back to the quote, you know, you, a lot of people say good things come to those who wait, but his quote is, good things come to those who go out and earn it. It's the only way to do it. And there's a great quote because it's, it's, it's not even, it's, it's, it's a reality. Um, you got it. You got to go earn it, right? You got to go take it, right? What do they say? You know, I'm a big MMA fan, and whenever there's a championship fight, um, and if it's a close fight, like a title fight, um, they always say, you always hear them say, they're probably going to give the win to the champion because to beat the champion, you got to take it from the champion, right? So if it's a close fight, they almost always side with the champion. In order to beat the champion, you got to take it from the champion. Whatever you want in this life, you, you can't sit around and think you're just going to get it the easy way, right? Because, again, right, because you're sitting in your basement rapping into a microphone that plugs into your mat and, and, and you're putting up, you know, weird YouTube videos with cats wearing Darth Vader masks. Like, none of that matters. <laughs> what you need to do is, is earn. You need to go out don't wait on anybody uh, and do it yourself. And that takes time, right? And, and the thing is, people get, get, they get discouraged quickly. Uh, we need to not be discouraged. You need to fight, right? And that's what we're doing. And Bobby and I have been fighting for, ever, for, for over 20 years. And the one thing my misfits can take from what we stand for is we haven't even thought about stop fighting. That's all we do. Every day is a fight. Every day we wake up, it's not easy. Every day Bobby and I get up, it's a fight. We have to keep fighting. It's the only way to progress and get what we want. And, and, and we're going to continue to do it. Because all these misfits out there, all these throwaway kids, all these juggalos, all these kids, you know, that have it tough, they fight. We all fight. We all fight every day. Uh, only difference is now we're fighting as, 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 as one unit, as an army. Nice, nice, nicely put. And to close out tonight's program, I want to finish it with the track. The track that I am a personal fan of. And you, it's it sampled the track that you guys cleared called I Just Died in Your Arms from the artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the artist is called Cutting Crew. It's a 1986 single. Uh, it's, yeah, all the, all the 80s track, yeah. Yeah, and the, the track... Uh, I liked it. It was pretty cool. And, you know, it's one of those relationship tracks that everyone can relate to, you know. The track is called uh, What Have We Become? And let's go into that track before I close tonight's program. What inspired that track? Um, again, it's another it's another chapter of life, right? We, uh, we all deal with a lot of the same issues and something that we all deal with are relationship problems uh, with, you know, your significant other. Um... And and this is our way of taking, you know, an 80s track, right? That whole, I just got in your arms tonight. Like, take it like this old 80s song that no one would ever expect Bobby and I to, to do. Um, <laughs> would you say you're a fan really, of that song? Pardon me? Would you say you're a fan of that song, too? I am. I'm actually, I'm a huge, both Bobby and I are huge 80s fans, like 80s all day. If only my, my, my fans really knew what happens backstage is it's like, you know, me and Bobby just jamming out to like 80s music to get ourselves all pumped up. Um, so yeah, we're, we're a fan, but it's also the type of song that no one expected us to ever touch. Um, and that's another thing we like to do. We like to go against the norm. We like to do things differently. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the song you played earlier, They Will Love You, you know, that was produced by, you know, uh, our good homeboy and brother who produced the majority of this whole album, Fairchild, Marky Fairchild. And this song was uh, was actually uh, produced by our boy, Rekha. Um, 
and you know he's a he's like an electronic guru wizard and, and, and he brought something fresh to the table with that sample and Bobby and I you know we just loved it and we wanted to talk about relationships in in a different way he, the DCS we always DCS things up uh, make them a little dark a little twisted uh, but with a lot of heart a lot of emotion and a lot of reality so I think people listen to these lyrics and listen to what's happening and they can relate um, and that's ultimately what we what we tried to do for this song in in, in, in a nutshell nice nice and yeah so any final words before we close out tonight because i i have to say that your music has helped me through my own personal struggles and i'm glad you're still putting out music as dead celebrity status you know we've been waiting for a long time and i'm glad you're still i'm glad you're back together and putting out music again yeah, it's a, it's a testament to to our fans, people like you, you know, that have been supporting us for this long. Again, uh, just the amount of the response and and, and the uh, the love and appreciation we've gotten thus far. You know, the album's been out a week and it's just smashing. Like it's just doing so well. Uh, top the Rolling just, Stones too. <laughs> pardon me. It said top the Rolling Stones too. I saw that. Yeah, top the Rolling Stones. You know, the top. You know, the cheesy album. The top. You know the Kendrick Lamar album on iTunes. Like it, it's just a wow. We've been gone this long. And people care, and what it really tells us is that we've made a connection. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to make connections. We're not trying to make fans. I tell that all the time. I tell people I don't want a fan. Um, you want to just be a fan? That's cool. I'm not going to stop you from being a fan. But I want I want to be a family, right? I'm trying to make personal connections with people. That's why Bobby and I respond to every single message and every comment that people leave on our pages, whether it's, you know, uh, Twitter or Facebook or, 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 or our emails. We literally spend hours every single day. And if you don't believe me, just go to our pages, you know, th- th- you know, call us on our bluff and look at people's comments and see if we've responded to them. We've actually responded to everybody. Um that's a lot. And, and that's what we want. We will want a family here, and we've been gone for seven years, and we promise you all we are, we will not be gone for seven years. We're here now. We're here to stay, um, and things are only going to get better because uh, what we try to do is, is always push the envelope and push each other. And uh, we already have a concept for the next album. This is no joke. We are already writing for the next album um, now. So, uh, we, we are ready. We're here to stay. Uh, I, I want to take a sec to thank all my fans, thank all my family, thank all my misfits. Um, it's been a, I hope you guys are ready. It's going to be a, it's going to be a crazy ride. Um, I want to give a shout out to my little nephew, Ilias and Bobby's nephew, Kieran, to a little, uh, the next generation of misfits that are, that are on, on the radio listening to the show right now. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're building a generation of misfits that will be here for a time. So, as I said, uh, one thing is with families, with our family, is we're not going anywhere. So whenever, you know, you need someone, you need someone to lean on, you need someone to vent to, you just need some, you know, uh, pick me up, you got us. We got you, and you got us, and, and, and that's what this is all about. So, uh, again, the new album, The Throwaway Kids, Get that hard copy. You know, it's on uh, it's on uh, the DeadCelebrityStatus.com website, the 682 Records website. Uh, download it on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. Uh, I want to thank everybody for making all the beautiful artwork, uh, constantly keeping the movement alive. Uh, people like Beast Mode and, and Charlie and Andrew and Barbara, the done the people that just constantly help us out and, and anyone sharing and posting and putting our stuff out there. Uh, it means the world to us, you know. Without you, there is no us. And uh, as long as you guys keep keep that fire, that fire torching, Bobby and I promise to keep burning down bridges. And, and that's what we're doing. We're burning down all these bridges that they created to try to tell us what is right. Um, we're gonna do things our way and show the world the way it is. Mm, yes. And for all those tuning in, we've been talking to Yasa Dead Celebrity Status. Thank you very much for being on the air, bro. Much respect. Thank you. No, thank you. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I hope you guys had fun. And, uh, you know, hit us up on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. It's uh, DC Stats at Twitter. Um, uh, DC Status on Facebook. Uh, Dead Celebrity Status on Instagram. Shout out to my boy Cliff over at, uh, you know, Media uh, Productions. Uh, really, you know, um, Society over at Society, uh, putting together all of our social media, uh, and we want we want we want to interact with you. So come find us, 
Come shout us out, uh, and let's build. Let's all build together. You, brother, I want to pers- thank you for reaching out. It was super fun. Uh, enjoy the music. I know you just ordered that album, and uh, thank you for rocking it on the station. And uh, you ever need anything from uh, from Bobby or myself, next time we'll get Bobby on the show, and uh, he can he can do a whole bunch uh, of rambling. And, and I would love to talk to Bobby. to Bobby. I would love to talk to Bobby. Yeah, so we'll set that up for the next time for sure, and I'll just sit back and listen. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, Throwaway kids, misfits, we're here. We can go anywhere. Let's go. Time to work. Rise up. Misfits, rise up. Yep. And this track, we're going to close out tonight's program. So if you're having some relationship struggle right now, definitely we're going to feel this one. Thank you, bro. You have to enjoy the rest of your day, man. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Love me, never criticize and judge me. Oh, she's so beautiful, but sometimes she can act ugly. Like when she says she hates me, but that just turns me on. So the more we yell and cuss, the closer we become. It's like we crave pain. I slap you, you slap me. It's nasty, but somehow the anger makes us happy. She swings the cut, so I call her a slut. But I'm a mutt. I guess we're both evil and equally fucked. It's like we're men and we're up, but then we're back in a rut. You walk away, I say okay, and then. We slam it or shut And then we kiss and make up Like it was nothing You call it discussion I call it dysfunction Something It's like we're addicts with habits That we just can't kick We know it's average But average is not romantic Cause when she cuts I bleed But I love to taste the blood And when we fuck we scream Now that's what I call love I just died on your own tonight must have been something you said The advantage which leaves permanent scars Too many wounds to bandage But somehow we manage to reverse the damage We know it's toxic But falling out of love is not an option So often we swallow that dangerous concoction Of pain mixed with fun In hopes that we become numb To the vicious attitudes and panic moods But what abuses us amuses us We call it gratitude Push me, shove me, tell me that I'm ugly Scratch me, now bite me Showing me that you love me Hug me or reject me like insanity You're sexy, you can kiss me like you miss me Or keep acting like you never met me Cause either way we like it edgy Cause normal is too formal And sketchy is the opposite of cordial 